speed of this ball is. 70 miles per hour. Consider and compare it with the fastest cricket ball delivered in 2003 by none other than Mr. Shweb Akhtar in 2003 World Cup in Cape Town, South Africa. That was 100 miles per hour. Why does that ball generate so much excitement and this does not? Well, it did not hurt anybody. <laughs> the cricket ball, when it's thrown at 100 miles per hour, it has the possibility to break your jaw, to break your skull, to hit on the chest, and create a lot of excitement. The game of table tennis, I can assure you, is as exciting, as rewarding, and as fascinating as cricket. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, <coughs> table tennis started in around 18, 1880 in England when people in winter, they used to play lawn tennis and when they could not play outside, they used to go inside. And also when during the rain, they used to go inside and they just started playing with their long rackets. And long rackets, because of shorter space, became shorter racket and shorter and shorter and around still bigger size than this one. So this is when it started, it was started calling ping pong. And around 1902, the first ping pong association came into being in England. 1927, when more people got involved, the first world championship was held and that was won by a Hungarian. It was not won by British. So first 10 years was dominated by Hungary, followed by people from England. It was not until 1959 that the first Chinese player won the first table tennis championship. It was also preceded by people from Japan as well. Some European also excelled, but Chinese have been dominating this game for the past 25 to 30 years now. It is now the, their national sport and the people who are playing table tennis, they are uh, given the status of like pop stars. Fellow Toastmasters, I'm just going to demonstrate to you a couple of things that will involve table tennis. And if you understand that, you will have a good grasp of this game. One is called spin, and second is called footwork. Spin is when a player imparts a spin. And these rubbers that you see, they came in, that these came into being in 1950s. Once they came into being, the whole thing changes. You players can do all sorts of tricks. They can do this uh, backspin or topspin and all kinds of spin. So I'm just going to demonstrate the spin. If the ball is coming at you like this, it's a topspin like in tennis. If you put a dead racket like this, ball is going to flow, flow, fly high. So you need to close the racket. If it's a backspin, if it's a chop, the ball is going to come like this, anti-clockwise, and if you put a dead racket like this, the ball is going to drop down. And so you need to slice. If the ball is having a side spin, the ball is moving from right to left, and if you put a dead racket across, the ball is flying, going to fly right. So you need to close the racket towards right. Similarly, if, if somebody does a left side side spin, the ball is going, going from right to left. And if you put a dead racket like this, ball is going to fly left. So you need to move your uh, racket to the backhand of the right-handed player. So, after the spin, the second important thing is uh, footwork. Because uh, ping, the difference between ping pong and table tennis is, ping pong, you don't have to move a lot. But in competitive table tennis, you have to move all the time. So I'm going to demonstrate to you three kinds of foot footwork. One is a foot, foot one step footwork. If you are standing here and a ball goes to the right, all you do is move your right leg. And if you are standing here, ball going there, all you do is move your leg slightly and just drag the right feet, foot. This is called one step footwork. If the ball goes further to the right, you do two-step footwork. 
If it goes to the left, you do the again two step footwork. And the third is three step footwork. You, if the ball goes further to the right, you take one step, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. So this is called a three step footwork. And you will be amazed by this clip what kind of movements and competitive table tennis has. So I'm just uh, going to show you a, a quick clip. seen here it involves all kinds of spins that we have demonstrated and all kinds of footwork one step two step three steps so if you ask on google how many calories will this table tennis burn in 30 minutes it will say 300 calories but not the competitive sport like this if if you are at a competitive level like this i can easily show you multiply by two or two and a half so I tried to demonstrate to you what kind of spin and the footwork that you can impart and if you can do that I think you can be the best table tennis player and like like these. Over to you. I really feel like playing table tennis because I would really do well with losing a couple.